Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7 reminds us, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on forever. And the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. We started this morning by lighting the candle of peace. I don't know if you're aware, but there's been um, a lot of talk about whether the peace candle should be lit or not lit this year. In Bethlehem, which usually has its Christmas lights that are supposedly better than Blackpool, uh, have chosen not to put their lights up this year because there is no peace. To be honest, I've struggled with that because I think the whole point of lighting the candle of peace is that the light shines in the darkness. And no matter how much there is an absence of peace, lighting the candle shows that the Prince of Peace has come and there will be no end to his government and his peace. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And we've taken part in the retelling of the story. If you can answer a proper Bible quiz after that, you're a good one. Because <laughs> it was a bit chaotic. But it's a story we tell every year. We're going to tell it again tonight. And we're going to tell some of it again tomorrow. But it's more than just a story. It's the reality of God stepping into history. Augustus really was Caesar. Quirinius really was the governor of Syria. And Herod the Great really was king in Jerusalem. And both the Jewish historian Josephus and the Roman historian Tacitus both said that Jesus really lived and did many extraordinary things. It's not just in the Bible where we read stories of Jesus. The angels, they announced that the birth of Jesus was good news for everybody. We've all been involved in some way in telling the story today. But it's not a story just for us. It's a story for people all over the world. Over all of continents and all people groups. So what about Bethlehem, Jerusalem, Nazareth? What about Israel, Gaza and the West Bank? Can this story be good news for them? Well, if we think about what's going on, we've got the Jews, Israel. Their history has been horribly punctuated by the Holocaust. And they live with these words at the forefront of the mind. Never again will we allow this to happen. Never again. The Palestinians, they live with history of leaving their homes, which have been theirs for years. But they left their homes to make way for Eastern European Jews who were resettled at the end of the Second World War. They see the land as theirs and they will never give up their right to it. Now, both those viewpoints have merit. You know, you could write old books and people have and have read them from both points of view. The trouble is, both those viewpoints are incompatible with one another. And peace will never be made through fighting or through armed struggle. This story of a baby in a manger, of God made flesh, of Emmanuel, God with us, for all of us, for Jew and Gentile, for Jew and Palestinian, reminds us 
that God, Jesus, is the Prince of Peace. But peace is not just the absence of war. The peace the Bible talks about is the shalom peace of God. The shalom peace of God. That is to dwell in God's presence. How do you achieve that shalom peace? It's not the difficult things in the Bible that trouble us, is it? It's the simple teachings of Jesus that trouble us. In Luke 6, 27 and 28, he said, But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. And in Matthew 6, verses 12 to 15, Jesus said, And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. It's that simple teaching that we find difficult. I was encouraged to read of Christians in Gaza who are trying to live out this teaching in the midst of all that's going on. The underground church who are caring for people regardless of who they are, who've been injured, who've lost loved ones. On what they report is that just as in our story, God spoke through dreams. Even today, God is speaking through dreams to people affected by war. Dreams where Jesus appears and people choose to follow him. See, the Christmas story is never, ever irrelevant. God breaks into any and every situation. Just as he did 2,000 years ago, 2,000 miles away. He does today, wherever we are. So what about us? How does this story affect us? Well, we're going to be meeting family, quite a few of us, over the next few days. Maybe people we don't see that often. Maybe people with whom we have conflict, but we come together for Christmas. Might this Christmas we need to reflect on this story and reach out with the simple good news. Might we need to forgive those who we find it hard to forgive. Might we need to seek to put an end to family conflict some of which has gone on for generations. Is it time as God's people to break those generational curses, to pick up the phone, to show love, to Zoom or WhatsApp or whatever we do and be reconciled with those who we find it difficult to be with? This story, it's fun to tell it. I love Christmas. I love retelling the story. But it means something to us. God is with us. The Prince of Peace has come. And I pray that the Prince of Peace will be with us all over the coming weeks. Amen.